Hey guys, Johnny Rocket here with day number two with Janetta. Today we're going to be teaching her how to roll from belly to back and back to belly in order to do the pineapples. Get some freestyle pulls in, some backstroke pulls, some breaststroke pulls, teaching her how to breathe to the side or at least the beginning stages of that using the pineapples. And if we have time, we'll get to some hand lead kicking type drills too, like head lead and hand lead. Yesterday you watched her learn how to float on her back, move herself on her back, float on her belly, move herself on her belly. You also saw her practicing her dismounts on her belly, her dismounts on her back so that she can stand up in water after floating or swimming for a period of time. If you like these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, become a member of the channel, buy the merch, follow us on the other social media platforms, but let's just dive right into it. Good. Good. <laughs> Excellent. Good. Good. Start staying lower when you come up. Yeah, okay. Don't start staying lower. Good job. Good. All right. So we're gonna go to our back now. I'm gonna have you floating on your back a little bit, reminding yourself how to keep your chin up, belly up, start kicking paddles underwater, and we'll go over a couple of back dismounts, okay? All right, lay back. Deep breath in, good. Belly up, good. Nice. All right, so knees to chest, sit up in the bed at the same time and start using your arms to twirl you, but keep that knees to your chest. Keep your knees to your chest. Good, good. I want you to also now, today, we're gonna take it to the next level a little bit by having her sit up in bed as she uses her arms and to thrust by sitting down at the same time. So I want you, when you pull your arms forwards, I want you to thrust your hips to the bottom of the pool, okay? Stay in your suitcase, but pull your uh, hips down to the bottom of the pool when you pull your arms through your body. Hips forward. Yep, okay. forwards, and then pull them backwards. Yeah, there you go. Yep, pull the arms more backwards before, as far back as you can get them so you get a fair pull. Yeah. Can you take your arms real quick? Hips forward. Nope, that's backwards. Hips forward. And then sit down. There you go. Forward. Sit down. Yeah. Yeah. Now practice this. Practice pull pulling your hips towards that wall each time you do it. We're gonna hop backwards. Okay. Hop backwards. Yeah, it's almost like you're using your arms to pull you backwards. There we go. There we go. Good. It's kind of an arm workout. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Good. Do you feel your how? You, do you feel your arms pulling your hips backwards? Yeah. Good. They're connected. The arms and the hips are connected. One goes back, the other goes forward, and then you pull through in order to swing your hips backwards. Okay. You might be sitting down too early. So push them forwards. Lean back. Push them forwards. And then. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Nice. Good. Good. All right, so turn around. Let's do this again. Floating on your back, and then your back dismount by pulling your hips backwards with your arms. Good. All right, go ahead and start pulling your hips backwards with your arms. Good. Nice job. Was that much easier? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Good job. We're going to do it a couple more times. Okay. We always start with review. Whenever you have another day with a, with the swimmer, the second lesson, third lesson, always start with review. There you go. Right now, you can start dismounting. Good. Now, let's on the next one. Before dismounting, as you start to use your arms, don't pull them up in the air and then swipe through because you're going to sink yourself, and that might make you nervous because your face is up. Okay. So, so lay back. Okay. Yeah, keep them underwater until the very, very, very end. If you need them to come up, you can have them come up. So first, pull them back and now start dismounting. There you go. 
there you go. If it helped, if it was better to have him up in front for the beginning, that's fine. Good, okay, whenever you're ready. Nice, that's how your face didn't even go underwater. Well done, good job. Let's do it again. Yep. Day two, things start clicking. Yeah. There we go. All right, whenever you're ready. Good job. One more. That's all right. We'll do another one. We won't end on that one. Okay. You got it. I'm not the first. Good. There we go. Good job. I like you keeping the, your uh, your hair dry essentially while she's doing that. That looks great. All right. Well, let's practice the front dismount so it's the opposite movement. So now you're gonna float on your belly and then pull through. Yesterday you were able to do this on your own, but I'm gonna help you for the first one or two. Okay. Here we go. And pull through. Good job. Good job. You felt your you felt yourself pull your hips. Yeah. Good. Good. Try to pull both hand, both knees together at the same, same time. time. Yep, by pulling both arms backwards at the same time, pull your hips forwards at the same time. Okay. Yep, the farther something is away from your body, the harder it is to control. So I can control my shoulder much easier than I can control my hand, and I can control my hips much easier than I can control my feet. Although there may not be as much coordination in those areas, you can control it better because it's closer to your core, closer to your heart. That seen better? Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's turn around. We'll do it the other way a couple of times. See if you can get one on your own on this one. Okay. Okay. Then. Pull the hips through. Pull the hips through. That's okay. Yep. When I'm not holding you, it's, when I'm not touching you, it makes a little bit more nerve wracking, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So pull those hips through and pick your head up. Okay. So once with. Okay. Okay. Pull those hips through and then head up. Good job. Yes. Excellent. Do it again. Good job. Nice. I barely gave you any help on that one. I let my I let your hands roll off my sunscreen. <laughs> Good job, nice. Yeah, it was one footed, but it was still good because that other foot landed really quickly. I've told you before how when you learn how to swim, the right instincts start kicking in rather than the wrong instincts. Well, right now what she keeps doing is every before every attempt, she's backing up because she's now telling herself she wants a little momentum when she does this. And that's right, a little bit of momentum helps you perform any task a little bit easier in the water because speed keeps you up on the surface. Momentum keeps you up higher. So as she pushes off the bottom each time, I'm watching her push a little harder and harder into her floats so that the dismount's getting easier and easier for her. I didn't have to tell her that, the right instincts kicked in. Pretty good. You, were, you wanted to dismount sooner than you needed to and your arms weren't even. So one started pulling and then the other started pulling and that threw all your balance off. Yeah. So let, you have the right idea, push off the wall a little bit okay. because you'll get closer to me. So even if the dismount doesn't work, I'll be able to pick you up quicker. Okay. So push off nice and maybe with just one foot, push off the wall and one foot on the bottom, push off the bottom, float for two seconds, rip through your dismount, rip it. I lifted my head up to give my hips time to sink. You've got lungs full of air, you can hold your lungs full of air for 30 seconds. Yes! <laughs> yes! That patience you're giving me is perfect. These handles on the boards here, these are fine if you have a kickboard like this or if you're getting one that's like this, that's fine. As long as your elbows don't come all the way off the board back here in the back. So maybe the handles might be too far back on the board and if your elbows come off the board, then those that's not a good one. Even on a kickboard with handles, you can still hold it the normal way with your hands at top, thumb knuckles touching like this, okay? 
that stretches your arms completely out in front of you. Don't hold it like this. That's not how they want you to hold it. All right, we're gonna start kicking in three, two, one. Your head will be up, your shoulders will be under. Don't push down on the board. In fact, pull up on the board. Let your body sink. And then you're gonna kick yourself basically on an upward angle. So your hips, yeah, there we go. You're kicking uphill. Good job. And you can breathe a lot more since your face is up. Yep. Good, shoulders under, keep board up. There you go. Don't put pressure on the arms. In fact, you lay backwards, put pressure on your hips. Your arms should be weightless. Yeah, now you can really start moving yourself forward because you're not putting the pressure in the wrong spot. It's gonna be slow going at first, but keep a little bit bigger and faster for me. Yeah, nice volume. Today we're gonna take the kick to the next level by having her do the scissor kick. She needs to kick down just as much as she kicks up and vice versa. So I want her to start thinking about how high she kicks too. She's already kicking down pretty well, but when she kicks up, I'm gonna have her start trying to cut, kick up a little bit higher and drive the other leg down just slightly deeper. One leg up slightly higher, the other one down slightly deeper, and then I'm gonna have her squeeze together to replace that position so that she starts doing scissor kicks. Now, in swimming, a scissor kick is actually an illegal breaststroke kick. It's one breaststroke foot, one freestyle foot. But what I mean by scissor kick here, and, and our purpose for our purposes, is like the uh, the ab exercise on land, where you switch your legs, and one going up while one's going down. If you've ever done that on your back, you know that it's really good for your core. But if you've ever done it on your belly, it's harder to do on your belly than it is to do on your back, in my opinion. Let's go ahead and um, push off. Separate your legs and I'll keep you floating so don't, you don't have to kick. Oh, I don't have to kick. You don't have to kick. Just separate your legs kind of pretty good. And I mean separate one up, one down. Oh. Yep. I'm going to bring the up leg up higher. Now switch. Look, bring that down leg down lower. Now switch them and keep switching them. But get faster as you switch them, which means they might get smaller, but get faster even so. And the more depth and height you can get out of each kick, the better. And stop there. So I'm gonna have you laying down on the beach, and you're gonna you're gonna practice kicking up above the water. Okay. Then I'm gonna have you roll to your belly, and have you try to kicking up above the water too to strengthen your hamstrings just a little bit. By having you in less water, it'll make your legs heavier, which makes it a little bit harder. And then when you get back in the water, it should be easy for you. Now lean back, almost like you're laying down. Good, I'm gonna put this under your under your head. Good. Now, kick up above the water. Yeah, it's not gonna be easy. Good, keep going. Higher the better. Five. It is very good exercise. Now, you can stop, flip over to your belly, and now kick up high, higher. Yeah, not good, good. Now, back in the water, big, large kicks, but they kick in both directions. Ah, that, coming up. Nice. Good. 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 Your feet are much floppier today. No stiff ankles. Good job. <laughs> yep. And dismounting with the kickboard is a lot like dismounting from your belly. Just bring your knees up to the kickboard and then plant your feet on the ground. Bring the kickboard up. You don't have to bring the kickboard up. If anything, you're going to push it down to bring your knees out. Oh, okay. Yeah, because before you were able to use your arms to pull all the way through. Uh -huh. Well, now the kickboard will pull down for you and it'll slam into your knees maybe. Good, nice large kicks. Way to keep the kickboard up. Good job. Soon, yep, Just don't put pressure on the board. You want to control it from the arms, but don't. Control it from your legs. Good. And then you can dismount here, sandwich the kickboard, I mean, pull the kickboard down, pull the knees up. Good job, nice and easy for you, yep. Excellent. Good job. Nice, I'm seeing it and I'm hearing it. All right. Oh, yep, go ahead, you're good, you're good. Oh, nice, stop. yep. Oh, okay. We'll finish the lap. Try not to jump up when moving forward because you'll still jump up and then sink down. Hold the kickboard up. And now crunch a nice dismount forward. Good job. Nice.
Now we've got her reviewed on her belly, kicking, moving with the kickboard. Now we're gonna use no kickboard. With the superhero posture, it's almost as if you have an invisible kickboard. So try not to press down on the hands. Pull the hands up, keep them at the surface. They don't need to come above the surface because everything on your body that comes above the surface takes on 12 times its weight. So keep them right there at the surface, just slightly there or slightly below, doesn't matter, but at the surface, not above, and don't be pulling down. If anything, what you need to do is give your hands a purpose, and their purpose is to reach forward more. Their job is to extend at all times, reaching for the other wall, even if you know you, you're not gonna be able to reach it from here, you're constantly closing the gap between your hands and the destination. Okay, so reach forward, stretch forward. It engages your core and allows your legs to have a much easier time. So you're gonna reach forward and kick a few, a few uh, seconds and then dismount. I'll count down for you. We'll start with three seconds of kicking, okay? Okay. Take a deep breath, face in the water. Take a deep breath, face down. Three, two, one, good. All right, let's do it again. Deep breath. Three, two, one, good. Let's put it around the other way. Okay, so you want me to keep my hands like right up? Correct. In fact, press up against my hands. Yeah. And then when it's time to dismount, I'll be able to throw them through. Okay. Uh, that could be a trigger. Here we go. A good one. Three, two, one. Good. That's all right. Yep, that's all right. No problem. I know. I got it. Uh -huh. I got you. It's a little nerve wracking at first. We've never done this hole before. Okay. Go. Three, two, one. Good. All right. One more. Oh, well, one more time this way, and then we'll turn around. Keep doing it. Ready. Do I keep my head up above the water? Nope. Under? Put it down. Okay. Yeah. When there's no kickboard, head down. Head down. Mm -hmm. Three, two, one. Good, wow, nice. I was prepared for you to grab me that time and you didn't really, you almost did. All right. Three, two, one. Yeah, good job. Good job. All right. We're gonna keep doing it. We don't okay. practice till we get it right. Practice okay. till we can't get it wrong. Okay. Three, two, one. Good job. Good job. <laughs> You're starting to anticipate the dismount, aren't you? Uh -huh. Good job. Good job. The three seconds actually gives you that kind of time to prepare. Kick fast. Three, two, one. Good. <laughs> nice. You're doing it great. Three, two, one. That's all right. Good job. Still good. Yep. Three, two, one. Oh, nice! I thought for sure you'd make me help you, but you didn't. Good yeah. job. I love you coming up happy every time. Here we go. Three. Yep, that's all right. You yeah. wanted to reset? I wanted to reset. Good reset. Yeah. She pulled herself forward, re-dismounted right away. Three, two, one. Yes! <laughs> She's killing it. Now we need to get her moving on her back again. Okay, so I'm gonna have her using her paddles this time like I taught her yesterday so that she can move herself in the water on her back, especially if she ever found herself in trouble in a pool where maybe she was swimming for too long or all of a sudden she didn't realize she got so deep and she couldn't find the bottom. She's gonna need to get to her back and stay on her back until she gets to safety. She might bump into a wall, perfect. Then she can reach for a wall she might get back to the shallow end or she might have at least enough time for a lifeguard or someone else to come in and help her get back to the side of the pool. But then again, this happens in lakes and rivers and oceans where if you were to fall overboard or you were to get in on purpose, swim around a little bit, but then all of a sudden the boat drifted further from you than you thought, well, you're gonna wanna get on your back and start heading towards the boat. All right, moving on your back. So chin up, belly up, legs underwater, kicking fast and now paddling too with your hands like this underwater. Good. Keep the legs underwater. Good. 
Now your hands are upside down. Turn your palms towards the bottom. There we go. Now you're pushing water down in order to boost your belly up. There you go. You're moving. Good. Take a break. Dismount. Arms up. Yep. Hey, somehow you didn't really need your arms there for some reason. <laughs> Just sat up there all of a sudden. But yeah, use your arms the, uh, the back dismount way where you pull them behind you. And swipe through in order to sit down. Hips forward, swipe through to sit down. It's normal for you to feel like you're curving to the side whenever you're on your back because the sky is moving. If you're outdoors, the sky is moving. It's hard to use it as a place to stay in a straight line. It's hard to use it as a landmark. It's not a landmark. And this pool particularly, it's even more difficult because we're really high up on a hill. So there's no other hills or really trees around to help us. Once you're on your back, at least when I'm on my back, I can barely even see the top of the house behind us. So it's gonna be difficult in this pool for sure. The other thing that can help are things like walls in pools that are a little bit higher, whereas ours is right over the edge. So this pool is, is, is stacked against you as far as being on your back goes. Oh, okay. So you might need me to help keep you in a straight line. There yeah. is a way to stay in a straight line when you're on your back, and that is to look side to side rather than down or backwards. However, I don't want or need her doing that at this stage. In order for you to stay in a straight line, I just want you to stand as tall as possible and go faster. Good. You're light as a baby. You're doing this all on your own. And keep those legs underwater. Legs underwater. Good. Nice strong. Your arms underwater too. You're doing too much splashing. And there we go. Nice, you're completely in the deep end. You're in the deepest part right now. So take a deep breath. Be proud of yourself. You're doing great things. You're probably starting to fatigue. So take a deep breath and push through one more time. Go, go, go. And time to dismount. Oh. <laughs> She made it all the way here. Wow. She took, she took two, uh, two attempts to get here. We took a break in the middle, but even with my hand on her, like you guys saw, there's two different things that's happening with my hand. Sometimes I'm pulling her. I told her I would, but she didn't let me or she didn't need me to. She was so light in my hand. I didn't need to pull her. I just let her kick herself all the way. Easy kicks, easy paddles. I call this the wiggle worm. Just easy floating on your back. I do this for competitive swimmers too when it's time to take a break from a hard set. I'll tell them to give me two laps of wiggle worm. Nice easy breathing with easy kicks, easy paddles. It's active recovery, keeps them moving. It also could save your life because you could probably do this for a couple hours if you had to. Well, you're past halfway. Before increasing your leg speed, increase your hands, the pressure of your hands. Now let your arms do more than one. Very good, very good. Look how light you are. You're staying in a straight line, don't worry. Now start kicking faster, but we're 75% of the way there. Keep it all underwater. Keep it all quietly underwater. Good, Get down, good. Almost there, two yards, one yard. All right, time to dismount, arms come back. Sit up. Good, good job, you made it to the end. I made it to the end. You made a whole lap of the pool all yeah. on your back. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, yeah. I'm gonna have her use this triangle streamline board here that Finise makes and I like this tool mostly for competitive swimmers, but it works for everyone. For the competitive swimmer, I like it because it keeps their hands in a streamline and it makes them kind of want to reach out. Now, the danger is that they won't, that they'll just have lazy elbows. So don't let them have lazy elbows. Make them stretch out. 
but for adults too, there could be a purpose where we're transitioning her between a full kickboard and no kickboard. And I want her to have a little in-between stage where she starts to feel a little more hydrodynamic, more like a swimmer. So that this will pull her arms in, her shoulders in a little closer to each other. She's gonna start to do things with momentum and speed as her focus rather than um, surface area and balance. Okay. Let's push off the wall, start keeping, keep your head up for now. Even though technically with this board, you don't want to put your head up, you want to keep your head down. I just want to see you with little fins and be able to talk to her. Oh. Bigger kicks with these fins, deeper, deeper. Yeah, it drives down deeper. Then kick board up again and stop here. Good. Okay, pull it up. It, but where the legs kick deeper, drive those knees down. Pull your hips. There we go. There we go. There we go. Whoa! All of a sudden, your balance came together nicely there, didn't it? Started moving forward real quickly. Yeah, it did. Good. Okay. And put my head down. Yes, yeah, so this time put your head down. When you lift it, we'll see how you do. If okay. I need to, if I need to intervene, I will. If I don't. I'll just start coaching you through it, Co giving you cues, telling you, okay, get one more breath, and you're gonna have to put your head down because you're gonna start to sing or something like that. Okay, okay. Here we go. Right. Breath. Good. Get breath in, and now head back down. Yes! Pull the kickboard up. Good job. Good job. All right, let's dismount. <laughs> Good job. Might <laughs> need to do the twirl. Yeah. That's I didn't right. get the, the kick, the dismount quite right. That's but. all right. Yeah. But you got the kicking incredibly <laughs> well. You're moving. Hold up. Hold up. There you go. There you go. Good. Breathe. Breathe. Put the head down. Here we go. Here we go. Now you zoom when you put your head down. Breathe. Good. You have the right balance, so you're good. Yep. I'm kicking as fast as I can now just to keep up with you. You're doing great. You're almost there. You're going to touch the wall. Let the kickboard go up on the wall and that'll help you dismount. Yep. The kickboard go up on the wall and helps you dismount. Now yeah. you're good. Okay. You did it! And you did it pretty easily. Here's a high five for you. <laughs> wow, that is so cool. Yeah. Isn't that empowering? Because yeah. now you can go home and do this. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Breathe sooner than you think. You're going to push off. Two seconds of kicking. Take in your first breath and start getting into a rhythm of breathing rather than holding your breath until you need one, taking it, holding your breath until you need one, taking it, holding your breath until you need one. All of a sudden, you can't really hold your breath anymore and you get done with one lap and you're all exhausted. And you ask me, why am I so tired after one lap? I need to increase my stamina. I'm like, no, you don't. You need to breathe more. And instantly, everybody who tells me they thought they needed to increase their stamina is now going 10 times farther than they thought they could because they're breathing. They weren't breathing before. Right. right over the blue line now. Breathe, breathe. Breathe more, breathe more. Getting stuck. Yep, getting stuck. I got you. You, When you went for the first breath, you just lowered your head before you'd actually gotten the breath. Yeah. So then on the second one, you were more desperate. So you took a breath in, you blew it out. <laughs> But your brain said, we need a second one. So as you were lowering your head, you took a second one in and sipped water. When you come up, make sure you get a breath. There we go. Got a breath. Step three. There you go. Good. All right. So you're starting to prioritize the rhythm more than the air. The air is still your priority. Okay. I'm still okay with you, kick, 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 coming up and taking multiple breaths in because I want you accomplishing the task comfortably before I start restricting your airflow. Okay. Airflow gets restricted at the end. Good. I tell her I'll do most of the work and then she doesn't let me. She's so good <laughs> and determined, I guess. Yes, determined. <laughs> okay. Dismount. Sit up. Sit up. Yeah. Hey, nice. Hey, using resources works too. Yeah. 
using use what you have. using what you have works too yeah. she used the wall to help her dismount there i'm okay with that i know she knows how to dismount i know she also needs more time to keep practicing it so all of a sudden she wants to help herself she helps herself with the wall totally fine use the resources you're getting comfortable on your back huh oh yeah good before yesterday you were in a talk or you were in a, a b now you're all stretched out this looks great All right, dismount, sit up. Oh, yeah. Better. Okay. Hey, you, need to, you need to drop your chin sooner because right now, going here, sorry, going here. Yeah, and I'm going under. You're raising your arms up into the air while your face is still straight up. And remember, the arms are supposed to sink you. Yeah. You don't want to be sinking when your face is still straight up. You're going to go underwater, get water up your nose, right? So you want them. So I need you here. I need your head down by the time your arms are up in the air. Okay. So as you pull your hips in, you're also gonna pull your head down. Yeah, like that. Still got a little in my nose, but it's not bad. Okay. Not bad. Okay. okay. Let's try again. Good. There you go. <laughs> For sure. That was it. Yeah. I need that. It definitely the problem before, and I didn't notice it at first. I had, it took me a while, it took me a few of her attempts to figure out what was going wrong, but her arms were coming up before her head came down. If your arms come up, you're still not really, and your head's still back, you're still not really dismounting, and you're about to sink yourself because the arms above the water have taken on 12 times their weight, so you're about to sink yourself underwater and get water up your nose. So now I have her bring your arms forward, hips backwards, and head down all at once. All right, go ahead. Head down. Good. Yep. Yeah. That's all right. A little better. Yep. Okay. There's an instinct that's telling you you have to be able to keep your face above water. Remember, it's okay if you plop your face in the water. It's okay if you go over rotate, but it's never okay to under rotate. Okay. Here we go. Stretch out tall. Good. Dismount. Head down. Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. You're so ready with your arms and kick lightly. You don't need a lot of propulsion from your kick when you're on your back, so stay comfortable. I want you now to feel like you're uh, taking a stroll through the park. I want it to be that easy for you. Because when you're on your back and you have fins, that's about as easy as swimming can get. So chin back and enjoy the ride. If you start to feel like you're sinking, then just go a little faster. Keep you in a straight line but i'm gonna let you do the work and it should be easy it looks easy you're looking really smooth i like hearing the breathing that's good i mean she's focusing on it she's being intentional i bet you even pretty soon she's not thinking about the breathing anymore but it'll still sound like that you about ready to dismount all right three two one Dismount. Good job. Good job. I'm so proud of you. Good job. You're making it across the whole pool. Was it easy? Yeah. God. Yeah. When you're getting more more air, it's yeah. a lot easier. A lot easier. When you get more air, it gets a lot easier. Straight from Janetta's mouth. You want both hands on the wall and you want your arms fully extended. Then you're going to bring your knees up to the wall about as high as you can get them and my feet will be on flat on the wall with the tops of my feet okay so I don't want your feet ready to push off with your knees in your chest but rather knees on the wall shins on the wall tops of your feet on the wall this is so that when you push off you don't get a big wave of water over your nose furthermore it's so that you can't really push off it's more like releasing from the wall so you're gonna lay your head back right where it needs to be your arms are fully extended your knees are high from here you just let your hands slide off the wall and when they do you can extend your legs watch extend my legs and start kicking away no water wall over my face and i'm just on my way it's a very smooth and delicate push off don't push it and don't jump up 
Don't try to pull, push off the wall too hard with your feet. It'll either hurt your feet or you're gonna go up too high and sink too low, something like this. Okay, and your face will still go underwater. So really, focus on the steps that I mentioned. Hands on the wall, and I'll do it with her on this one. Hands on the wall, and if you can, flat on the wall, especially this one. Bring your knees up as high as you can get them. Lay the chin back. You might be able to get your knees up higher. And now let your hands slide off the wall. And now extend your legs. Now start kicking. You did it. Stretch out tall. You did it. Well done. I'm gonna steer you to the middle of the lane and then I'm gonna let you do it the rest of the way. Okay. Stretch out tall, take a stroll through the park. Very nice, you're past halfway. Lay your chin back a little bit more just to relax. But you went above and beyond, you didn't just walk behind the hot tub, so I'll take it. Time to dismount, three, two, one. Yeah! <laughs> keep doing it. Keep twirling. Keep twirling. Keep twirling. <laughs> yeah! You're making it. I'm aw That's awesome. <laughs> Incredible. All right, well, it's now it's time, time to start doing pineapples. So, the way you roll from belly to back, first, you need momentum. When rolling from your belly to your back or your back to your belly, you need momentum. So, that's why I always get people comfortable on their backs, kicking and paddling, on their bellies with superhero arms, because the pineapple uses both. So you're on your belly, you're gonna need to roll to your back. If you're kicking and your arms are in front of you, that's perfect, pull one arm down to help start the roll. It's like your trigger. It's the trigger for the roll. Watch me. When I roll to my back, I'm gonna put my arms by my side, Start paddling and kicking with my head up, okay? I'll show you again. This is how you roll from belly on to your back. One arm pulls, it helps me roll. I lay my, uh, get on my back and immediately get my chin back and start paddling and kicking. Ideally, you don't even stop kicking during the roll. You'll be kicking during the roll, but some people need to in order to make a harsher movement and that's okay. All right, we're gonna give it a little practice run here. We're gonna do it rather quickly. We're not gonna spend a lot of time on our belly, okay? I'm gonna let you push off, get a couple kicks in, but in less than two seconds, we'll be initiating the roll. Here we go. Two, one, pull, roll, chin back. Good job. Good job. Good dismount. Yeah, you're yeah. See how this is gonna go? Yeah. Going through the motions helps a little bit, right? Yeah. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. Pull, pull, roll. Good. And dismount. Good. Should you lift your head up when you roll? And normally on paper or for competitive swimmers, my quick answer would be to keep your head in the water and roll like this. But I've been finding more success with my adults in the last few months when they lift their head slightly, not to breathe, but lift it and then roll. Watch. Good. You're gonna need, good. You're gonna wanna use your arms more to help roll you. I noticed that I'm, you're almost fighting against me. Roll, or use the pull to roll your body open. Because remember, the harsher you pull, it's more like you're grabbing a wall, not water. So you could really pull yourself around. Okay. Okay. And then the second arm finishes the roll. So it's like... This one rolls half your body. That one rolls the rest of the body. Yeah. <laughs> you're so cute. You were like, I'm going to dismount right away. Get on your feet. Get on your feet. Give me a hug. That was so cute. You're so sweet. You're such a gentle, you, you're, you're, you're amazing. You can't roll that quickly. You got to okay. get on your belly first. You got to get on the belly. Okay. Never change. But don't ever change yourself. You're, that was amazing. So for you to, to just go right into it, it causes you troubles. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah you're still pretty hoarse for vertical. Be careful. Okay. All right, here we All go. All right. Okay. So stretch out in the water. Mm -hmm. Stretch out in the water first. Completely. Okay. Because I'm because it feels like I'm completely under the water, but I'm supposed to be getting my head above. Ah, uh, we're rolling too quickly then. Yeah. Yeah. That's where it feels kind of weird. It's like you feel like you could go a little longer on your belly to resurface first. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm so, gonna count down for from three. Three is usually the amount of time a body takes to resurface from pushing off the bottom. Okay. When you push off the bottom, because you're pushing up, even though you're trying to push forward, and by the way, lean forward as much as you can so it's more forward push, there's a little bit of time between when your body resurfaces and uh, when you are about to perform your task. So you need to wait just long enough for your body to resurface. Here's a good example. Watch what happens when your body, when you don't give yourself enough time to resurface from pushing off the bottom. You're going to end up twirling underwater like this. You want to kick a little bit longer to allow your body to resurface. So usually about three seconds. Okay. Chin back, chin back. Good job. That was your best one yet. We, we, uh, Chin down, chin down. <laughs> chin up, chin up, chin down, chin down. Chin down. Chin up, chin down, chin up, chin down. That's <laughs> Put your chin like up, put your chin down. It's like a military drill. Chin up, chin up, yep. chin up, chin down. <laughs> it's actually one of the reasons adults like me. It's because I bark. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. like that. It's quick, it's it's commanding. It's like, oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah right. Hey, don't think. forget, don't forget, chin up. You know, like, <laughs> no, you're drowning now. Yeah, you're drowning. Stop drowning. <laughs> oh, don't panic. <laughs> Relax. Yes. Oh, man. I'm going to help you dismount. It's not as important as the, the pineapples are right now. What I want to tell you guys, the camera, uh, the, the audience here, is that she just did that one mostly on her own. Now, you noticed it wasn't as good as the one prior to it, but that's because I gave her way less help. Good. Wow. And dismount. Yeah, I'm going to let you dismount. You're doing it. Yeah, that one was all, almost all on her own. I'm holding the arm, I'm supporting the arm, her right arm, that keeps wanting to pull down more. And I think I, I think I want her to t pull it off to the side more, but I'm also not gonna confuse her with that because she's doing enough where she'll probably figure that out on her own. If I give that to her as like something to remember, it might throw something else off. So there are certain things as a teacher you might need to withhold. Sometimes there is information overload. Be careful of that. Good. Good. All right, let's do it one more time that way. So turn around. Good. Wow. Sweet. Sweet. Nice job. Especially with the pineapple. Uh, that felt good? Yeah, it felt good. Yeah. I mean, it's a little strange, but. Yeah. It still feels, it feels floppy, too. I bet. Yeah, it feels a little floppy, but yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, the other thing is, you know, as you learn how to put strokes together or poles together, more momentum makes rolls smoother. Remember, the more still you are, the floppier it is. The yeah. faster you're going, the smoother it is. Yeah. Because your momentum helps spin you on it. All right, so now the second pineapple is how you roll from your back onto your belly. She's going to find this one easier. Most people do. When you're on your back, you're going to take a super deep breath and then take one arm, doesn't matter which one, go behind your body and across your body with it. So I'm landing for the water that's right here by between my ear and my shoulder. So I'm going to take my arm up into the sky, backwards and across my body, all very quickly like this. Okay? Now that throw of the arm, you rotate your body back into the water, but you also have to put your face in. Okay, I've seen some people, the only way I've ever seen anyone really fail this is because they were they're reaching but they wouldn't let themselves go back into the water you're looking for the water so you're going to follow it with your face which arm do you want to use to roll to your belly okay pull it down by your side now you're going to roll from yeah you know it you ready three two one go oh that's all right <laughs> wait three two one go and then dismount and then dismount. Good job. Yeah. 
And yeah, I won't make you kick right away for a little bit. You can kind of go right into a dismount afterwards. If you want to kick a little bit to rebalance, that's fine too. Water up the nose. Yeah. Okay, so one of the cues I forgot to bark out was deep breath. Take a deep breath before you roll. That way you can release air out of your nose if it starts, to, if you feel like it might go up it. If the water's about to go up your nose or you know it could happen or you just want to prevent it anyway, take a super deep breath and hum yourself back into the water or just release the air through your nose back into the water. Now, the arm, we're not gonna go yet, but the arm's gonna go here, okay? All right, deep breath, go. That's all right, you gotta follow it with your face. Okay. Deep breath, go. And dismount. Good dismount. <laughs> Any water up the nose that time? Uh, it still is, but it's like my dismount was kind of like one legged though. But yeah, it might you might maybe uh, pick a little bit. I know I told you you don't have to, but maybe that is what you need to do just to balance yourself out a little bit. Uh -huh. Do you feel when you roll back in as if you could, or are you like nervous? I'm uh, nervous You're when nervous. I do it. And you want to dismount right away? Yeah. Okay, yeah. then let's do that. Which arm do you feel like you want to? Okay, here we go. You're so silly. <laughs> I know, so it's the so it's the opposite. This okay. If I'm if I'm rolling this way, I'm thinking that if I'm rolling, then you got to use that arm. Then if I got to use this arm. If you're gonna roll this, this way, way, you got to use this arm. Okay. If I'm gonna roll this way, you got to use that, that arm because you got to go across your body in order to roll it over. Oh. Okay. All right. You got me. Yep. I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell which way we were going. No, this is how learning goes, folks. I just said, in fact, I probably got in your head maybe a little bit. I love that you're laughing at yourself. That's good. You need to. Um, I probably got, maybe got into her head a little bit when I literally told her and you guys what the common mistake was before she even attempted it. The common mistake is what you're doing. You roll, but you don't roll with your face. Right. So what you're doing is essentially the same thing because you're rolling the opposite way with the face. <laughs> It's the same mistake. It's the same mistake, and it's the only mistake that can be made here. So as soon as we figure it out, you're going to be like, oh, easy. Yes, yeah, all going in one direction. All going in one direction. direction. Follow the hand. And that's the resistance because you don't want your face in the water. I think that's that's what that, that is. I okay. think so, too. I think all it's right. an instinct, okay. the wrong one. Let's go ahead and turn around. Then. Okay. All right. <laughs> Starting to figure it out? Yeah. There was yeah. a little head a little head twitch, but then you went the right way. Yeah. Little head twitch, but then you went the right way. I got you. I got you. Okay. Good job. Uh when you went well, when you went that way, your head went under straight up. So you got water up your nose? Yeah. Yeah, clear it out. I'm now come alongside her. I'm gonna come alongside her now and do it with her for a couple of times. Okay. Is <laughs> that your head on my shoulder? Okay. Now we're gonna roll together. So we're gonna roll in three, take a deep breath, two, one, and then come up. Good job. Nice. Wow. Having my arm bar out there helped, yeah? Yeah, Good. helped a lot, yep. Yeah, so like I said, dismount's not as important right now as the pineapple is. Okay. All right, let's do it one more time. Wasn't that awesome? That was night and day. Yeah. <laughs> Once I figured out a better way to help her get it down the first couple of times, sometimes, you know, as a teacher, you're not perfect. What I should have done was this, three steps ago or three three attempts ago. But, you know, we're both learning. Here we go, head on my shoulder. Good, <laughs> got it. The last thing we're gonna do today is start using her arms and she'll start learning how to pull herself through the water. Get ready for this, this is exciting. I'm gonna teach her how to pull now. We're gonna finish up our two days together with some breaststroke pulls and some freestyle pulls and some backstroke pulls. So breaststroke pull is both hands at the same time. You know how to do something like this? And then you bring them together. So you're scooping the water. Watch my hands. Okay, now put your hands on my hands on top. Grab them. And actually be around me. Okay, so when I pull, I pull like this. Grab okay. my hands harder. Grab them, grab them harder because I want you to feel what I feel. Okay. Okay? So I'm pulling water back and then I'm scooping my hands in and pushing forward. Okay. Does that make sense? All right, let me get to you. Yeah. 
good. Let me take more control. Okay. Oh, it's more elbows. Okay. Got it. Okay. Apparently it's more elbows. <laughs> That's that's true. I didn't realize that, but you're true. You're right. When you were doing it and you know resisting me more, you were more straight. When I started doing it, you loosened up your elbows. It is. It's in more in the elbows. All right. So here's how we're gonna do this. You're gonna take a couple of poles, two of them, and then dismount. They're gonna be pretty strong poles, and that's okay. Take two strong poles and then dismount on your belly. Okay. I'm gonna give you a boost too, by the way. Okay. Three, two. Do I, and my head is gonna be under the water. Correct. Your head will be underwater for both poles. Okay, and it's gonna feel like a glide. Yep, you can kick. Okay, <clears throat> all right. Ready? Two, one. Now dismount, now dismount, dismount. Good, 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 <laughs> good. Yeah, you pulled yourself from there to here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, let's do it again. Three, two, one. Good job. Good Great. job. Do it again one more time and then I'm going to teach you the freestyle poles. Okay. Good job. I saw you dismount on your own real quick. That was good. You would have had it too. You only, you reached for me only because you thought you had to. You didn't have to. That was good. It was a good dismount. All right, freestyle arms. So now you're going to be pulling one arm at a time. And then the arm comes above the water. Once you pull all the way back, the arm comes above the water. Some people like short pulls, some people like long pulls. When you're learning, it's okay to do either, whichever is more comfortable for you. Eventually, yeah, we lengthen out your pulls a little bit so that you're pulling all the way in front of you, all the way behind you, and then the arm comes out and back around. But if you stop your pull early, that's okay, okay? And we're gonna do the same thing. Yeah, and pull the other one, do it again. It's like you're, it's like you're digging the water out in front, scooping it backwards. Remember the cookie to the cookie jar to the cookie. Yeah, the cookie yeah. jar thing. Yep. Yeah. That's what you're doing. That's what we're doing. Freestyle. Okay. But I want you more focused on pulling than I do want you on focused on a cookie or a cookie jar. Okay. If that's a visualization that helps, then great. But that makes sometimes examples like that make you feel like you're just going through motions. Whereas I want you to feel something. I want you to pull water. Okay. All right. So you're gonna do three strokes and then dismount. One, two, three. I have it on an odd number on purpose. Okay. I'll tell you why after. Okay. Nice. Push off with both arms in front of you and just kick for just a second to let your body resurface. You started swimming while you were still going up and then down because of the push off. Remember that? Uh huh. Glide. Glide first. Yeah. Glide first at the beginning, then take your three strokes. It'll look like this. Okay. The line kick first in your superhero position, balance you, and then start taking pulls. Okay. And your arms are gonna be. Yep. Here. Okay. That was good. Well, you're nervous about leaving your feet off the ground. Yeah. yeah. Try a breath stroke pull and then some freestyle pulls. Okay. All right. Because you were more confident doing brushstroke pulls. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're nervous about this. I know. I'm gonna go with you. Okay. So what you want me to, to do, just... Start kicking. I'm gonna hold you up. You need to keep your head up now. I'll hold you up. Okay, now arm pulls. Head down. Maybe a deep breath first, then on down. Now dismount. Good. That's all right. That's all right. We're doing it. We're doing it. Do it again. <sighs> this time, start out here. Don't do any breaststroke pulls. Just start kicking. Head up. <sighs> okay. Head down. Three pulls. Now dismount. There you go. There we go. Now we're getting it. Yep, that was much better. Okay. We'll do it one more time and then we'll teach you backstroke pulls. Okay. All right. When I send you on your way, you're going to be doing more brushstroke and backstroke, not, not so much freestyle. Okay. We'll wait until November when we get back together and do more freestyle stuff. Yes. Good. Okay. All right, one more time. 
Good. One, two, three. I say that and then right away you started getting it way better. I said that and then all of a sudden you started doing it way better right away. Does it start coming like, this is, okay. So this is what he wants. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Three, two, one. Yes, here we go. Face down. Yeah, now dismount. Yeah, you went for it. And it was good. It was really good. Can we try it one more time? Yeah, of course. We're going to do it back that way. Okay, all right. Good job. Good job. Yeah, getting way smoother. Way smoother. Yeah, okay, cool. All right. All right, so backstroke arms. Okay, backstroke arms when you're on your back. So I already taught her how to paddle and kick on her back. Right, I already taught her how to paddle and kick on her back. So I'm going to start giving her a couple of tips on how to use her backstroke arms. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because like I told her, she's got two more days in November. We've got months between these two days and her next two days. So we have some stuff we're leaving on the table that we can work on later. So the four steps of backstroke arms, I'm going to go over with her another day. Today I'm going to go over two, one or two of those steps. So the backstroke, I want you to think about reaching back for more water. Reaching back to the water. Bring your arm above the water and reach back for more. It doesn't matter so much what's happening up here yet. We'll go over that on another day. Bring your body, start pounding and kicking. So then the arms, we're going to reach back, pull water. Yeah. Then I'm going to hold you up. You just keep pulling. All right. Stretch out your belly. Stretch out. Good. Legs underwater. And dismount. Good. Nice. <laughs> Fun, right? You're swimming backstroke now. Yeah, okay. Okay. You're also going to be doing backstroke much sooner than freestyle. You got halfway down the pool in just a few seconds. She's going on her own a little bit. And stand up. Good job. <laughs> You're quick on your back. Yeah. You're fast. Yeah, I think I like that position better. I think I like it better for you. Yeah. yeah. So the last part of the backstroke arms that she'll need to learn today are windmills. So I want her to keep her arms moving. Now, <laughs> she's already doing it. She was already doing her windmills. Most beginners, they swim from their pockets, which means that they take one arm pull, come to completion, take the other arm pull, come to completion, take the first arm pull again, and it's not... It doesn't keep them moving steady. It's like rising and falling in the water. You'd rather windmills when you swim backstroke. So one arm opposite the other and they just keep moving. But like I said, she's already got it. Let me show you real quick what it looks like. Let me show her what she's actually doing. She probably doesn't know. It's hard to know what you're doing when you're swimming and learning it. But your arms keep moving. Okay. Arms keep moving like windmills. Keep your legs underwater when you kick. Okay. When you're kicking, your legs are coming up a little high again. Keep them underwater. Start there. So start by just paddling and kicking, keeping your legs low, stretching out tall, and then I'll cue you to bring in the arms. Okay. Good push off. Paddles and kicks. Stretch your body out. Chin back. Windmills. Go. Perfect. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. And dismount. Good dismount. <laughs> I'm swimming. I'm even gonna let you bring in the first couple arms. Go ahead. Windmills. Chin back. Chin back. Watch this. And dismount. Yeah! Nice! You're doing it. She's swimming all on her own, folks. My name is Janetta, and this is day two of being with Rocket Swimming with Johnny. He has been so awesome. Like on the first day, um, I was really rather nervous. I'm a, a true beginner, but first day, I was kicking all the way down to the other end of the pool, the deeper end. And the day two, I learned like backstrokes and just just a lot of cool stuff. 
Um, he is a great teacher. Um, like me, you might have gone to the Y and just kind of felt like that was just really a beginning place. But if you want to become a more comfortable swimmer in the water, a more advanced swimmer, definitely come to Rocket Swimming and definitely look up Johnny. He is awesome. And the team is too. Thank you, guys. Yes, ma'am. Would you, would you say you feel a lot more comfortable in the water now after these few days? Oh, yes. I feel much more comfortable. I'm like, I just jump right in now. So it's not like I, I feel like I have to be careful. It's okay. You just jump on in. Yes, ma'am. That's all it is. If you found this video helpful, splash that like button, subscribe to the channel for free, buy the merch, follow us on Instagram and all the other places. Consider becoming a member today on our YouTube channel. Help out small creators like me. And if you want to learn how to swim all on your own, like Janetta did, and you want to come to Austin, or you might be near one of the cities, or you know someone, or you have your own pool where you can help me come to you, then email me or shoot me a text on WhatsApp, and I will respond in the order in which I receive all that communication. But it's been a lot of fun working with Janetta these last two days. I hope she also had as much fun as I did. I can't wait to see her again. I hope you guys get to see the follow-up videos that we do in a few months. With that said, let's get ready to rock it.